Morning, sir. Morning. Could you please state your uh, name and spell your last name for the jury? Ryan Nagel, N A G E L. And uh, where do you live? I live uh, in Canton. And how long have you lived in Canton? Uh, 30 years. And who, if anyone, do you live in Canton with? Uh, I live with my girlfriend now and her son. And prior to that, where did, who, if anyone, did you live with? I fam my parents, my brother and sister. And uh, you have two siblings, a brother and a sister? Correct. And are you the oldest? Yes. And your sister's name is what? Julie. And do you work, sir? Yes, I do. What do you do for? Uh, I'm a union tin knocker, which is uh, HVAC. And how long have you been doing that? About 12 years. Now, sir, if I could turn your attention to uh, January 28th and to January 29th of 2022. Do you recall that? I do. Recall what days of the week they were? I believe it was a weekend. And at some point, call going out on that evening? Uh, yes, I do. And where did you go and who, if anyone, did you go out? Uh, I went to CF McCarthy's to begin the night with uh, two of my friends, well, now my ex-girlfriend and uh, my friend Rick, to meet up with uh, my sister. And uh, so your girlfriend at the time, and what was her name? Uh, Heather Maxson. And uh, your friend Ricky, uh, what's his last name? Uh, Dan Tano. And you and uh, your girlfriend at the time, Ms. Maxson, how long had the two of you been dating? Uh, probably about a year, year and a half. And your friend Ricky, how long had the two of you been Oh, probably since sixth grade, so pretty long time. And you went to see if McCarthy's, is that a establishment you're familiar with? Uh, yes, sir. It's in the center of town. Uh, been there plenty of times before? Yes, sir. And did you go just sort of the three of you, or did you meet someone else there? Uh, met my sister there. And where within the bar did you go? Um, I believe at a table, to my acknowledgement, to what I remember, yeah. Uh, do you recall sort of what side of the bar you were? Uh, I was on the, I believe I was on the left side, near the bathrooms. So if you're walking in on the left side towards the bathroom. Correct. And do you recall about what time it was that you got there? Yeah, I don't know, probably, I don't even really remember, seven, eight maybe. And uh, do you recall how it was that you got there? Like what mode of transport did you take? Oh, uh, Ricky drove. Ricky drove his own. Vehicle, is that correct? Correct, sir. And what kind of vehicle did Ricky drive? Uh, I believe it was a 2018 F-150 pickup truck. Gray, dark gray. And uh, he picked you up, is that correct? Correct, sir. And was Miss Maxson with you when he picked you up? Yes. Um, now, as far as uh, C.F. McCarthy's was concerned, um, you're at a bar, you were drinking, is that correct? Correct, sir. You recall what you were drinking? Uh, probably beer, it's usually what I drink. A particular brand or anything? Uh, Coors Light. And uh, as far as your girlfriend at the time, Miss Maxson, do you recall what, if anything, she was drinking? Uh, I would probably say beer as well. I'm probably either Bud Light or Mick Ultra. And uh, your friend Ricky, was he drinking as well? Uh, yeah, he had a few. And if you know about how long were you at uh, CF McCarthy? <clears throat> probably a few hours, probably two, maybe three hours. Now, following that, where did you go? From there, we went to, so a friend of mine uh, shot me a text, and we went to uh, the hillside, which is on the other side of town. Are you familiar with that establishment as well? Uh, yes, sir. And when you say it's on the other side of town, about how long is the drive sort of between C. F. McCarthy's and the hillside? Probably 10 minutes. And uh, when you arrive there, uh, how many friends are, are we talking about that you're meeting up with? Uh, it was just one other, uh, one other gentleman. And fair to say when you get there, you, you have some more drinks? Yes, sir. Same thing? Yep. And uh, if you know, in total, sort of over the course of the evening as you're going from one place to the other, how many, how many beers did you have? Oh, probably between, I don't know, five to eight, maybe. Give or take, I'm not sure. And is that a, a large amount or a normal amount? How would you Um, I guess for the weekend, it would probably be like a normal, maybe, I guess. You weren't driving that night? Uh, no, sir. No, I was not. And about how long was it that you were at the hillside? I would say I was probably there an hour-ish, give or take. And do you know about what time you left? Probably around midnight. And when you left from there, where was it that you went? I went to pick up my sister, Julie, because she shot me a text asking for a ride. And so you were at the hillside when you received the text from your sister, Julie, correct? Correct, sir. And um, did she, what, if anything, did she indicate as far as where she was or where you were going to pick her? Uh, she said uh, she was at her friend Brian's house. And is that friend Brian, is that someone that you're familiar with? Yes, sir. And who do you know that person? Uh, just my sister's best friend since they were kids. And I'm sorry, what, do you know what his last name is? Oh, Albert. And his house, have you been there before? Uh, I've driven by it a few times, yes. 
that somewhere you would pick your sister up from on prior Ah, uh, yes, sir. And again, as far as when you leave from the hillside and you're going to um, this address, you know, did you know what the address was or did you have to ask your sister for it? Or no, I already knew where the house was. Um, did you know specifically what the address was or you just knew generally where it was? I didn't know the address. I knew the street name, but I didn't know the number. And what did you know the street name? Uh, Fair, uh, Fairview. And as you're, so you exit the hillside, get in the truck, and Ricky is driving. I'm in the passenger seat, and Heather is in the back seat. And the back seat, as far as uh, Ricky's truck is concerned, can you describe sort of what that is? Uh, uh, it was like a jump seat. It's the uh, crew cab, so it's got like the suicide doors on the back. And by suicide doors, you mean they sort of open up in like sort of a triangle? Is that? Uh, yes, sir. Now, about how long was it after you received the text from your sister to the time that you sort of jump in the truck and start to go over to there? Probably 40 minutes or so. We kind of took our time. She said she didn't like. She wasn't saying, come now. She just said, you know, when you get a second, you come pick me up and bring me home. And uh, if you know about how long a drive is it from the hillside? To the Five minutes, seven minutes, maybe. And uh, as you're driving along, as far as the address is concerned, is that something that you gave to Ricky as far as the GPS, or were you giving him sort of verbal directions? Uh, verbal directions. And do you recall what you sort of said as far as where to go? Uh, yes, sir. And what was that, sir? Um... Like the direction we went, you mean? Like the I, street? I think we can move beyond that, Mr. Lillian. What I'm trying to ask, uh, sir, is as you're approaching Fairview, call which side of Fairview or how you approach Fairview? Um, I was coming down Cedar Crest, so Fairview would be on my left. And as you're coming down uh, Cedar Crest with Fairview on your left, what, if anything else, did you observe sort of in front of the truck? Uh, I noticed a car coming up the hill towards us. And can you describe the other car that you saw coming up? Uh, it was a black SUV. And it was that a black SUV that you were familiar with or anything like that? No, I really, no. I didn't get the end of the question, please. I'm sorry. Sir, if you could just, and, and I know it's difficult, but if you could just wait till I finish the question. Yep. Sorry, sir. So, um, so, I'm sorry. So, as you were coming up, you see this uh, black SUV. Uh, did you recognize it as something you had seen before? Uh, no, sir. And when it's, so you're approaching at the same time, is that correct? Uh, yeah, just about, yes. And with regard to Fairview being on the left, what, if anything, had Ricky done with respect to the, to the vehicle to signal the left? Uh, he put his left blinker on. And that other vehicle that was coming in the opposite direction, what, if anything, did you observe as far as uh, their direction? Uh, they had their right direction on. And so as a result of that, what, if anything, did... did uh, he flashed his headlights to let the person go because they were going to beat us, obviously, to the, to the turn, so... And uh, when they were coming in, so they went first, is that correct? Yes, sir. Ricky's truck then proceeds behind that black SUV onto fair. Yes, sir. And as you're coming up to the house, uh, to Brian Albert Jr.'s house, uh, where did that black SUV go? Uh, probably about kind of right in front of the house, I would say. Same house that you were going to? Was that Correct, correct? Sir. yes. And as far as vehicles being the, the black SUV and Ricky's truck, are they facing in the same direction? Yes, sir. And which side of the truck... Uh, that you're in is, is facing towards uh, house, uh, Brian, uh, Brian's house. Say that again? Sorry. So, very poorly put question. So with regard to the truck that you're in, yes. um, is it the driver's side, the passenger side, or something else that's facing the house? Oh, passenger side. So my side. So your side and the passenger side facing the house? Yes, sir. And where did Ricky stop the truck in relation to the house? Uh, right in front of the driveway. And uh, when you stop uh, in front of the driveway, about how far away from you is the black SUV? That Probably a car length in front of me, a car length and a half in front of me. And as you're sitting behind that, uh, what if anything was in between the truck, Ricky's truck, and the, the black SUV in front? Uh, there was nothing, sir. And at any point in time uh, that you were there in front of the house, would you observe anybody get out of that truck? I mean, get out of the SUV? Uh, no, sir, I did not. And when you arrive there, what, if any, communication do you have with Julie inside the house uh, in reference to your presence? Uh, I texted her when we were coming down uh, Cedar Crest saying, hey, I'm almost here. You know, get ready to come out. And about how long was it between the time that Ricky parks in front of the driveway and the time that your sister comes out? Probably about two minutes. And do you recall seeing her exit from the house? Uh, yes, I do. And how did she sort of exit and how did she come up to the truck? Uh, like, you mean like what door? What door and how did she... Uh, I would say the side door next to the garage. And how was it that she... Did she come across the lawn, down the driveway? How did she come up? To uh, yeah, she crossed through the lawn a little bit, but obviously walked down the driveway because we were at the end of it. And at this time, when you're in front of the house uh, on Fairview, uh, what was the weather doing at that point? Uh, it just started to snow, sir. 
And as far as accumulation on the road or the, the grass or anything, did you see anything like that? Um, very little. wasn't wasn't too much on the on the ground yet. And as far as when your sister was walking down from the house uh, to the truck, uh, did you see anything as far as like footprints in the snow or anything like that? No, I was not really looking for that. So not anything you know. No, no, sir. Um, so she comes to the truck. Um, how was it that you spoke to her? Did you roll down the window, open the door? How did that? Uh, I opened the door just because I assumed she was going to jump in the back seat. And she goes, oh, would you guys like to come inside? Um, I looked over at Ricky, and he goes, eh, maybe we should call it a night. Because obviously we were out for a long time. So she goes, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay a little longer. And so she shut the door, and I watched her go in the house, and that was it. And uh, time from the time that uh, your sister came out and the time that she went back in the house? <clears throat> maybe 30, 45 seconds tops. A relatively short amount of time? Yeah, it was kind of like an in and out. Now, as far as the black SUV in front of you, uh, what, if anything, did you observe about uh, movement of that vehicle at any point? Uh, I noticed that the brake lights, the only reason I know this, noticed is because the brake lights were on uh, and it moved, it moved up maybe another car length in front of us from where it was. And when was that in relation to when you were parked out there waiting for Julie, talking to Julie, when did that? Occur? Probably simultaneously when she came out the door. So moved up a little bit further, about a car, car and a half? Further away from us. Facing in the same direction? Yes, sir. And uh, was that the only time that you observed the vehicle move up, or did it move up again? Uh, no, that was the only time I saw it move. And when you say the brake lights, what part of the brake lights were you looking at? The only reason I noticed that it was the brake lights and not the regular parking lights, because the uh, third light above is on. And so above, sort of in the, the center of the back of the vehicle? Correct, sir, yes. As far as any of the other lights or any other part of the vehicle, what, if any, damage did you observe on the vehicle at that point? I did not observe. I, it was dark out. And as far as when the vehicle moved up from one position to the next position, um, what, if anything, did you observe in the roadway as far as tire marks in the snow or anything like that? I didn't really observe any, any other tracks in the snow besides the car in front of us. So you did observe tire marks from the car in front of you? Uh, yes. But no other tire marks that you saw? No, sir. And as far as uh, around the vehicle, uh, at any point in time, did you observe anybody exit the vehicle or be outside of the vehicle or anything like that? Uh, no, sir. No, I did not. And did you see anybody go from the vehicle to the house? No, sir. And did you see any footprints in the snow or anything like that around the vehicle? Uh, no, mainly because I obviously it was late at night and I wasn't really looking for any of that. As far as uh, your sister, when she comes out uh, to the truck outside, how would you describe... Did she seem overly intoxicated to you? Yeah, it seemed like she had a few. Words or stumbling as she was walking? Uh, no, sir. Let me ask, from the time that you came down, um, you came down from Cedar Crest, is that right? Correct, sir, yes. So from the time that you came down from Cedar Crest, the black SUV is in front of your vehicle sort of the entire time, correct? Uh, from, like, the point I turned on to Cedar Crest, you mean? Yes. No, the only time I saw the vehicle was when we probably got up 100 feet from, from Fairview. And, and I'm sorry, it's a poorly put question. Is what I'm asking is, after you turn from Cedar Crest on the Fairview, that vehicle is in front of you the entire time. Oh yes, sir. Yes, yes. And so you watch your sister Julie go back up to the house. Is that correct? Ah, uh, yes, sir. I did. Basically to make sure she got inside, okay? Yes. And did you observe her go inside the house? I did. Yes. And after she gets inside the house, what if anything did Ricky do with the truck? Uh, he pulled out to go around uh, the SUV in front of us, and then to go home. And as far as pulling out, as far as sort of the distance between the truck that you're in and the SUV that's in front of you, did Ricky put it in reverse and then have to like maneuver around or could he just sort of pull away from the curb? He just pulled away. And as he's going by the dark SUV, what if anything did you observe with reference to that? Uh, I observed that there was a, a person inside the car with uh, the interior light on. And that would be sort of a, a dome light, is that right? Correct, sir, yes. Could you see where the where the dome light was as far as in the left, right, or center of the vehicle? Uh, I was in the center. And can you describe the person that you saw? Uh, where were they? First of all, where were they in the car? Uh, they were in the driver's seat. And can you describe what the person looked like? Uh, it was a woman. And uh, how do you know that it was a woman? Had long hair. Do you know what color the hair was? Uh, no, I didn't. I was, wasn't really paying attention to it. I was kind of just watching Julie go in as we were pulling away. So your direction was to the house as you were walking <clears throat> Julie go in and Ricky's pulling away sort of simultaneously? Yes, sir. Um, so that's why you're looking over in that area of the house? Correct. 
And uh, the woman that you see in the driver's seat of the vehicle, uh, could you see her lips moving as if she was talking or anything like that? Uh, no, I didn't. wasn't really paying attention to that. And as far as uh, what, if anything, did you observe her to, to be doing or how was she seeing? It seemed like she was looking straight ahead with her hands at 10 and 2 on the steering wheel. Now, as far as the other, what, if anything else, did you see or who, if anyone else, did you see with, uh, within the interior of the vehicle at that time? I only saw one person at the time. I didn't, I wasn't really looking. It just happened to be like at a glance as we drove by. And so your head's already turned in that direction, looking to see your sister get inside the house, correct? Correct, sir, yes. And so as you're going by and you make these observations of this woman in the front seat of the vehicle, what if any movement did you do of your body or your head to, to look into the vehicle? I just turned my head as we were driving by to watch Julie go in and then turn straight, look forward. So it's not as if you were peeking forward or going back to get a better view inside the vehicle? No, sir. Now, during the time that you were outside of the house, uh, did you hear any noises or, see, uh, or hear anything coming from that vehicle in front of you? Uh, no, sir, I did not. And as far as within your own vehicle, when Julie comes out, what, if anything, did you or Ricky do with regard to sort of the radio within? Uh, turn the music down. We had music playing. You had music playing as you pull up, turn it down when Julie comes out to talk? Correct, sir, yes. And at the time that you're pulling away from the curb, had you, and you or anybody sort of turned the radio back up? Uh, not that I remember, sir, no. Now, with reference to when Julie comes out and you, you open the doors so that you can talk to her, is that correct? Yes, sir, yes. And did you open uh, just the, the front passenger door or the back door or both? I opened my passenger door, that was it. And you were expecting her to essentially get in at that point, is that fair? Correct, sir, yes, I was. Now, when you opened the door uh, to the pickup truck, the passenger side door, what, if anything, happened with the dome light inside the truck? It went on. After you go past uh, the dark SUV, um, where did you go from there? Uh, to my house, sir. And as far as your house, who, if anyone, gets dropped off there in addition to yourself? Just me and Heather. And uh, Ricky then leaves from there, is that correct? Yes, sir. And from that road on Fairview to your house, about how long a ride is that? Five minutes. When you left uh, the roadway on Fairview, the vehicle that you had seen after uh, it initially pulls up an additional car, or car and a half or so, uh, when you left, was it in the same position after its movement that you observed? Uh, yes. Uh, Your Honor, with the court's permission, I would just ask to uh, publish a couple of photos uh, for use with this witness. Okay. Mr. Steelman, if I could have uh, exhibit number 71. You recognize what, what is the Yes, I do, sir. Say that again? What do you recognize it to be? That it's the Albert's house. And that a fair and accurate portrayal of what the house looked like at the night that you were there on the, uh, the early morning of the 29th. Looks like there was more snow than what I came to. Yes, sir. Now, with reference to Ricky and the truck, uh, you could use a mad laser pointer. Uh, do you see that area of, of the street in front of the house where Ricky parked the truck? I do, sir. Right about there. And Ms. Gilman, if I could have the next exhibit number 72. Now, the area that you were describing when you first pull up to the house and the dark SUV is in front of you, do you see that area within uh, this photograph? Uh, yes, I do, sir. And if you could, using the latest point, direct the jury's attention to where in this photograph is. And uh, Ms. Gilman, if I could have the next photograph, uh, next exhibit, excuse me, number 73. Again, what's up on the screen? Do you recognize what's in that photograph? Yes, I do, sir. And within this photograph, you see that sort of secondary position where the vehicle moves up and where you see it in that secondary position? Yes. And again, if you could, using the laser pointer, direct the jury's attention to where in the photograph you observe. And from that side of the yard, is there any sort of landmarks or anything else that you observe sort of in the area where that vehicle pulled up to in that secondary position? Uh, I know there's a flagpole there, and there, I believe it's an electrical box, along with bushes. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ms. Gilman. You can uh, take that. If I may have just a moment, Your Honor. Yes. No further questions for this witness, Okay. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Nagel. Good morning. A couple of questions for you. Since January 29th, have you been contacted by anybody from either the Albert family or the McCabe family about circumstances of January 20, 29th, 2022? Uh, no, I have not, sir. Have you been contacted by any other person other than the, the Albert family or the McCabe family since January 29th, 2022 about your testimony or your statements? About my statements, no, but I mean, me and Ricky are best friends and obviously it's things that we brought up Fair in the past, enough. yes. So you and Ricky, how do I pronounce his last name? Dantano. Dantano. You and Mr. Dantano have obviously discussed the circumstances of, of that night. Yes, sir. And what happened? Yes. Did that change your testimony in any way? No, sir. No, it did not. Um, you were interviewed by Massachusetts State Trooper 
on or about February 7th, 2022, correct? Sounds about right, yes. Do you, do you remember uh, which state trooper that was? At the top of my head, no. His name Michael Proctor sound right? No, sir, I've, uh, I don't think, I don't think so. You don't believe it was Michael Proctor? I'm not 100% sure, no, I'm not sure. Do you remember uh, the, the state trooper that did interview you had a partner named Yuri Buchnik? Uh, yes, that, that, sounds, sense. that sounds familiar, yes. Um, during that interview, you told, a, and I'm just gonna call him the trooper, since you don't remember his name, the trooper and Yuri Buchnik, uh, that there were two other people in the car when you approached 34th Air. Say that again? You told those two troopers that there were two other people in the car with you. Ricky D'Antono? Yes, yes, in my vehicle. Yes, sir. Okay. So they were well aware of the identity of Ricky D'Antuno and Dantano. Heather Maxson. D'Antono. D'Antono and Heather Maxson at the time. Correct. As early as February 7th, 2022. Yes. Um, I want to talk for a second about your approach to Fairview Road. You were coming along Cedar Crest, correct? Correct. You would have been going west-ish. I know it's a curved road, but sort of west. If Fairview goes north and south. Yeah, okay, yes. You would have been going west and then turning south onto Fairview, correct? Correct, yes. You indicated that the SUV, the dark SUV, beat your, beat your car to the intersection. Is that right? Correct, sir. And because the car was ahead of you, uh, Ricky flashed his lights as a, as a courtesy to say, you've got the, you got the turn. Correct, sir. Because both of you were, were approaching the intersection, but the SUV was closer. Correct, sir. Uh, you pulled up to Fairview and stopped relatively close to the driveway, as you've indicated to the jurors, correct? Correct, sir. And your car was as much as three car lengths behind that SUV. Do you recall that? Uh, when we arrived? Yes. I would say car, car length and a half at the time. Okay. Do you recall being interviewed on or about May 11th, 2023, by individuals not associated with the Commonwealth? Uh, a gentleman came to my door, but I did not speak to him. When it refreshed your re recollection, do you remember uh, talking in May of 2023 with anybody about this case? Uh, uh, I don't know, 2023 may have been the feds. Okay, let's- I, I'm just, trying just, to- Just listen it, to my question. No, I understand. Were you talked to by anybody? Just tell me if you were talking, yes or no? Yes. yes, I believe so. Okay, do you think it would refresh your recollection as to when that interview took place, if you saw a report? Yes, sure. Okay. Yes. There's a date right up top and then a highlighted portion at the bottom. If you wouldn't mind taking a glance at that and then look up to me when you're finished reviewing that. Okay. Does this refresh your recollection, sir, that you indicated in that interview? Just, and, just two parts. Does it refresh your recollection? Understood. Does that refresh your recollection about what you may have said? Uh, yes. So there was an interview in May of 2023? Yes. And you did indicate uh, some distance that you were behind the SUV in that interview? Yes, well, at the beginning, it was only a car length and a half, and then probably at the end, by the time we left, it was about three car lengths. Okay, fair enough. So at the end, it was as much as 20 to 50 feet ahead of you? Give or take, yes. Okay, so 50 feet, obviously, further than the length of this courtroom. Correct. All right, uh, so at a time when you were in the truck, still stationary, that SUV had pulled ahead of you at least three car lengths, correct? By the end, yes. Okay. You've already indicated, but I want to make sure I'm clear about this. Did any car pull in between Ricky's truck and the SUV when you were sitting behind the SUV? No, sir. You didn't see a Jeep? No, sir. With a big old snow plow on the front of it? No, sir, I did not. That car was never between your car and the SUV, was it? I never saw any other vehicle in between us. All right, fair enough. Um, when you got to the location, you indicated that you had texted your sister that you were arriving. Correct, right? sir, yes. How long before she came out the door uh, to meet you at the car? Then say like the text you mean? Correct. Two minutes, because we were coming down Cedar Crest and I texted her saying we're almost there. And then once you got on <coughs> Cedar Crest, it's just a few seconds to drive up to the driveway of therapy, correct? Yes. Did she text you back? I don't remember. You had your phone out? Yes. And it was in, I'm guessing it was in your lap or in your hand? I would assume yes. Okay, uh, so for a period of time, while you were inside the cab of the truck, as you were pulling up, you were monitoring your phone to determine whether or not she was gonna text you back, step out of the house, whatever. Yes. Finally, uh, your sister did come out the front door, is that right? Correct, sir. And when she came out the front door, you were looking toward a, sort of toward the right. Now, when you say front door, like there was, there's two doors to the house. That's a good point. Um, there's the, let's call it a front door, which is the classic front door, and then a Correct. side door? Correct, sir, yes. Which door did she come out? Uh, the side door next to the garage. Okay, so that would have been close to 90 degrees from where you were seated. You would have been looking to your right. Yeah. 
not yes. necessarily looking straight ahead. Correct. All right, so for that period of time, as you're looking to your right, you see her come out the side door. Yes, sir. And you watch her approach down the driveway. Correct. So at this point, you don't know what's happening with the truck in front of you at, in, in those moments. No, I wasn't really paying attention to that at the time. Okay. Um, you indicated that uh, you, were, you said on direct examination that you believe that once she was out and at the truck, that she was there for 30 or 40 seconds. Correct, sir. Do you remember actually testifying at a previous hearing in May of 2022 that it was more than five minutes that she was out by the truck? Uh, it was not five minutes. I'm saying the whole time that I was there, probably between two to three. Do you remember being asked how long, if you know, were you talking with Julie out in front of the house and you indicating under oath a little over five minutes, I would say? I mean, if you got it, sure. I mean, yes. whatever you guys have. You tell Mr. Oh, yeah, Lally what page it is or something. May I have that back for two Yes, sir. Seconds. Yep. Thank you. Just take a look at that highlighted portion and look up when you finish. May I approach? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Does that refresh your recollection? Seems it, yes. Okay. Is it, in, in fact, was it your testimony that back in May of 2022, much closer to the event in question, that you indicated under oath that y'all were actually talking for closer to five minutes? The whole thing, probably, yeah. Okay. You indicated that you opened up the, the truck door, is that right? I opened up my passenger door, correct? So that doesn't, does that, you know, F-150, does that automatically open up the suicide door as well? Uh, no, it does not. There's a handle okay. on so the inside of the door to open. So it was just the passenger door that was open? Correct, sir. Got it. And your sister Julie would have been standing in the crook of that door, correct? Yes. So the door would sort of obstruct something to her right or toward the front of the truck? Correct. That would be the door? Right. Uh, how tall is the truck? Is it, is it lifted? Uh, it was, yes. Okay. So that door is probably up above eye level. Uh, I wasn't that high, no. Okay. You talked to, you indicated that while she was out there, you turned the music down so you could have a conversation with her. Correct. You talked about whether or not she wanted to come in the, the truck and leave, <coughs> correct? Say it again. You talked about whether or not she wanted to get in the truck and leave. I asked if she was coming, yes. You also talked about whether or not you would come in the house and stay. She yes. asked that, yes. Okay, so there, there was a conversation back and forth about either you staying at 34 Fairview or her leaving 34 Fairview and getting in the car. Correct, sir. There was also a conversation about whether or not you guys needed to give her a ride then or if she could get a ride on her own after you guys left if she wanted to stay. Correct, sir, yes. And part of that conversation included even talking about whether or not maybe her mom, uh, your mom, would come get her after you guys left. I would assume, maybe. I don't Two years ago. Right, understood. Uh, but there was, it's safe to say that there was a, a dialogue back and forth during which time you're engaged with your sister to your right, she's engaged with you looking straight ahead in the crook of the door when it's freezing cold out. Correct. All right. During this time, your attention is focused on your sister, obviously. Yes. At some point, she did decide to stay. Yep. And at that point, uh, she then left the crook of the door. You would shut the door. I'm guessing you shut the door. Yes, sir. And then Ricky figured out, okay, we're going we're gonna to get out of here, and she's not coming with us. Correct. Did you all wait long enough to see her go inside the house? Uh, just gradually pulling away and watch her walk in the house. Okay. And that, after, that answers my next question. When you pulled away, you didn't speed away, correct? Correct, sir. Gradually, slowly pulled away and out and around the SUV that was in front of you. Correct, sir, yes. So you all made up the distance at that point uh, after you had this maybe five-minute conversation with your sister. You made up the distance and got up to the SUV that was in front. Yes. All her taillights, all the taillights were intact. I, to my acknowledgement, yes. I mean, you, as you sit here. I mean, like, may I? Of course. I mean, I'm not there to, you know, look at a car and be like, oh, is there any damage on a vehicle? It's 12.30 at night. Obviously, I had a few drinks. I'm out looking for that. I just noticed that the brake lights were on. So. The point is, as you sat there and you testified about this before, you noticed no damage on any of the taillights. Not to my acknowledgement, no. Okay. There's three taillights, one to the left, one to the right, and one center top. Correct, sir. And you didn't notice or note anything out of the ordinary with regard to the rear of that truck? No, like I said, it was dark out. Okay. Uh, at any point, did you see that SUV in front of you? Drive up 50 or 60 feet, slam into reverse, and then drive backward? No. At any point, did you see that SUV reverse and hit a pedestrian? Jack, sir. Sure. I'll, I'll allow that. You didn't see that, right? No. At no point did you see a person laying on the lawn? No, but I also wasn't looking. But you didn't see it? No. And you did see the truck in front of you? The SUV, yes. The, sorry, the SUV in front of you? Correct. All right. You didn't see a person standing or lying 
on the ground anywhere around that SUV, did you? No. And it's not just that you didn't see that SUV hit a pedestrian. That did not happen while you were sitting there, did it? Jackson. You can go ahead and answer that. Uh, no, I did not. After you drove away, or drove up slowly uh, in order to drive away, you were the passenger, or as you drove away, I should say, you were the passenger closest to the SUV as you would be passing it, correct? Correct, sir, yes. You looked out the right window of that F-150, correct? Correct. And you could actually see inside the SUV as it sat there idling, correct? Correct. That's because the dome light was on, isn't that right? Correct, sir. And you noticed that the dome light on, was on inside because you could clearly see what was happening inside the, the SUV at that time as you passed by. I mean, I wasn't directly looking inside. I was making sure my sister got in the house okay. Right, but you did look inside that SUV. As I passed by, yes. And you saw one person. That's all I saw at the time, yes. Female with long hair, is that Correct. right? Correct. You did not see anybody else inside that SUV? No, not to my acknowledgement. As a matter of fact, you were asked that in prior testimony and you indicated in response to that basic question, no, she was alone, correct? Correct, sir. Yes, okay. Just to be clear, sir, she was alone as far as you could see, correct? Correct, sir, yes. Okay, nothing further on. You are all set, Mr. Nagel, thank, thank you very much. much. Appreciate it.